All right, so we got three comic books here. And the reason that I'm doing three Spider-Man books is because, well, for one, they literally put like five or six Spider-Man books out today. <laughs> I already did a video on one by itself because that one was truly phenomenal. And I wanted to give it its, its own thing. This one, I was almost going to do the own th its own video for as well. But I decided not to because I feel like I want to put it in this group for a reason. So Symbiote Spider-Man is a great comic book done by an old legend, Peter David. Then we have Amazing Spider-Man 23, which is literally a lesson in how to ruin a comic book with one sentence. And then this one where Spider-Man takes on capitalism. <laughs> and they show how capitalism is evil and bad. So let's go through these one at a time here. And really, the, so I, I want to stress that they want you to pay $4 a piece for these. So you can learn life lessons. So this is, this is the final to Hunted. It's kind of the aftermath. And... <laughs> I really liked Hunted, and I still like this story, but, you know, Nick Spencer, he's got to do his quota because when you're over, when you're over at Marvel, you got to be woke. You got to be woke. You got to put those politics, and, Nick, and make no mistake, Nick Spencer, while he's been doing a good job on this book, is woke. The guy is uh, literally a chameleon. He ran as a Republican for office. And didn't get in. Then he switched his politics over. He failed, by the way. So then he switched over. Now he's like super, super Mr. Progressive man. And running around. He used to be a jerk online. But he did the right thing and got off Twitter. Or he made his Twitter private or something. And I guess he's actually been quiet on it. Which is good. However, you can never put it past these people to sneak their garbage in. So I feel like people are going to nitpick because I'm nitpicking. But... Spider-Man at the end, like the whole issue is about him getting back to Mary Jane, right? He's getting back to Mary Jane. Uh, also, Craven's clone becomes Craven, so it's almost like he didn't die at all. That's kind of the <laughs> that's kind of the the summary of this book. But he gets back to Mary Jane, and we get some dialogue from the villain that's that was like lurking in the shadows around her, and he's like. I'm disappointed in you, Pete. I can't believe you would think so little of me. You think I'm just going to go and off your one true love like some bad cliche villain? I get that you were fighting toxic masculinity, the hunter, and all that, but it's definitely not my style. Did you catch that? It's one word, though. To toxic masculinity. So the whole theme of this book was Craven is a representation of toxic masculinity. And he gave up that toxic masculinity to uh, <laughs> to to let Spider-Man win or whatever. Craven looks pretty sweet. The new Craven. So see, boom, he becomes Craven. So it's almost like he never he never died. It's just a younger Craven. Now, like I still enjoyed it. This series as it all. Like this book, you can totally skip. You don't need to buy Spider-Man Twenty Three. But. It's like, really? You were doing such a great job, and you got to shove that in there. you got to put those politics in there, don't you? Like, it's just, this is typical Marvel. It, this is typical Marvel, because they always jam this crap in there. And it's just like, did you, did you even really have to do that? Did you even really have to do that? So what, being a big, bad hunter man? That's toxic. That's a toxic thing. Because he really didn't act that bad the entire series. He's literally in a window, and uh, he's just a... So basically, if you look like this, if this is what you look like, if you're a, a big dude and muscular, you know, rugged, a real dude, you're toxic. Is that what that means? So basically, everyone should just be effeminate wimps. Gotcha. Gotcha, Nick Spencer. Gotcha, Marvel. So then we flip over to this one where he fights capitalism. It's like two Spider-Man books, two lectures. Gotcha. Uh, it starts off with like him learning about it from his uncle Ben, and his uncle Ben like gives some bum money, and Peter's like, "Uh, what if he uses it to buy booze?" <laughs> and his uncle's like, "Who cares? Let's get him drunk." It's like, dude. Okay, let me tell you something. Most of the most, a lot of them that are like hanging out on the highways, they're looking for a fix. I can tell you that is a true thing. 
or they're uh, panhandling for cash. I talked to somebody that was talking to some dude talking about how he made like a hundred dollars a day just uh hanging out panhandling guy had like a house and a family and shit and uh he just made like a hundred dollars a day sometimes more just hanging out there so yeah i'm weary on who's the real deal make no mistake there are a lot of people mostly all of them the ones legit ones all have like usually bipolar and a lot of mental illnesses it's sad it's a sad thing but anyway, that's not the moral of the story here. Uh, this hipster bum is is getting money, and this this guy's like, I'm gonna beat you up because you're a bum. Look at me in my tux, in my suit, and uh, Spider Man wraps him up violently for for the police to come get him. Violently, kind of wraps that guy up, and then he kind of caresses the bum. But what's going on here? is Aunt May is working in a shelter, similar to how she is in the Spider-Man PS4 game. And she's like, we're gonna get this running and we're gonna get all you guys in here so you're okay. And then these uh, capitalists come and look at him like, May Parker, we're here to take over the joint. We like money. So these capitalists come in and what they do is they literally hire the Prowler (laughs) <laughs> they hired a prowler and the reason they don't want the reason they don't want this shop open is because they don't want degenerates ruining in the city like well hold on we re- we represent all of the businesses in the neighborhood and you're just going to open up this shelter soup kitchen right next to all of our businesses and bring down you're going to bring down the real estate area which is true like hey we got a bunch of businesses we don't want it. We don't want it getting ruined by all these like homeless people hanging out here all the time, scaring away customers. Like <laughs> that's that's not what people want. You need to get permits or something, lady. Like I would be mad too. I don't want my. I want to make money in my business. But see, Marvel, they don't care about making money, so they want to say, you know, we could get this gentrification out here. We got to degentrify the neighborhood. So they hire the prowler to uh, light the. I got to see the art in this issue was very good. It was way better than uh, Amazing Spider-Man's art, by the way. So we got these guys come in, and he sets the building on fire, and it looks like they're going to blame Spider-Man. But it's like, do we need this? Do we need this? Like, oh, okay, all the businesses come in, and, you know, they don't want their neighborhood brought down, so they're bad. They're, they're bad people. That's where this arc is going. So literally we fought the Orange Man Trump crowd, in the last arc, and now we're going to fight capitalism in the new friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It's a joke. Uh, this is this is good stuff, though. This is a normal comic book, Symbiote Spider-Man number three. I've done this is three videos on it. This is all about um, Symbiote Spider-Man. It's kind of a, a throwback tale. There's not too much to say. They they blackmail Black Cat. It's a straightforward story. Uh, They blackmail her. They're going to tell Peter about her powers and that the kingpin is uh, responsible. So they blackmail her to get a piece of the symbiote. And she ends up doing it because, of course, she does. And at the end of the issue, which is pretty cool, I liked it. While she's taking off to go give a piece. And see, look at that. While she's taking off to go give a piece of the suit, the suit wakes up and... Like is gonna go after him, after her while she's sleeping, which I thought is pretty cool. So the next issue is gonna be him like asleep fighting her. We also get this little scene where she's like, you know, trying to get. She wants to seduce him so that she can get the suit. So she's like, you know, why don't you, uh, why don't you come get some? Using her sexuality, good stuff. Uh, you could tell a normal man wrote this, <laughs> wrote this issue, and that a weirdo wrote this one. It's really obvious. So this, this is this is shit. We don't we don't want this one. Don't buy it. Tom Taylor is of course garbage as always. This is okay if you can get past like the life lessons. I'm hoping this isn't a turn for Amazing Spider-Man. After 23 issues, we're going completely woke now. Is that where we're going, Nick Spencer? I hope that's not the case. Uh, this was pretty good. I like this one a lot. So if you're looking for like a normal, straight out fun comic story, Symbiote Spider-Man seems to be the place to be. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got. So like, subscribe, you know, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. Leave comments, check out the links in the description. And that's pretty much it. Tom Taylor, you suck.